Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Summer of Guests. Uh, we're going to keep the guests on coming on the Mindless War podcast with uh, our good friend of the channel, SoCal Exploring Scott. How you been, my, my buddy? How you been? Man, I've been good. You know, it's been a while since I've been on here, and I'm happy to be back. I've been busy, so I'm happy to get back on here and talk some horror, you know? Yeah, back on the grind, man. You just hit, uh, you're at 2,000, 2.4 thousand subscribers man how, how does that feel you know it's it's crazy because when you're at um when i just hit a thousand at the end of last year it was like you know a couple of people would come up to me in the park and stuff and now it's like i go to universal and and tons of people know you from the internet it's weird it's a weird feeling because i've always been like awkward about it you know yeah i feel like people think that i mean but uh i it's just it's i'm not used to it yet and it's it's cool to have the ability to upload a video and tons of people enjoy it instead of being like, oh, is this going to fail? Is this going to be good? I just like how I have a strong fan base around all the theme parks now instead of just HHN and horror and stuff like that. Yeah, it, sound, it sounds like it's going really good for you. I see you doing a bunch of events as far as uh, uh, different things go, construction updates. Uh, you do a lot of media at SeaWorld. Um, I guess that's like your that's your local kind of one, right? Where you're at? Yeah, that's my local park. So that that's a lot of that's a lot of fun. I actually just watched your video today on the new uh, Atlantis like show that they do, which looks pretty pretty badass. And I'm Man, that shit's insane. The Tesla coil. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. It's like going off the guy's head and his hands. It's insane, man. So yeah. Uh, kudos to you, man. You, it looks like you're you're doing good for yourself, and and I can't be more proud to be sitting on the sidelines. Supporting you any way I can. That's that's pretty badass, man. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for the continuous support. Oh yeah, no problem. So we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, a couple things today. We got um, E3 just hit uh, finished up this week. Uh, what an E3 it was too. Um, a couple horror well, games I want to talk about. The shit went down at E3. <laughs> oh yeah, man. It all. What an E3 it was. Um, there's a couple horror games I would like to uh, touch up on, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the new Doctor Sleep trailer, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about you uh, towards the end, just to kind of get an insight of what's to come this summer with SoCal Exploring. Uh, who is SoCal Exploring, and um, how you can be like SoCal Exploring, maybe? Dye your hair blonde. There you go. That's all you gotta <laughs> do, and then get a camera, go to the theme parks, and boom. SoCal right, Exploring. Let's dive into it. Um, all right, so we're going to talk first about some E3 news. First two games I'm going to talk about, uh, Blair Witch. They're coming out with a Blair Witch game. It's supposed to be a first-person uh, horror game, kind of like the Outlast uh, games, that kind of style. I don't know if you're going to be able to fight or anything. It looks in the trailer that you probably won't be able to fight more like Outlast was. Um, if any of you are familiar with Outlast, it's another game where you just hold a video camera and you record and document things, but you if you see like an enemy or some sort you have to hide because you have no ability to fight back which is an actually in interesting concept for a game um have you seen this blair witch trailer and if you have what are your thoughts yeah i, I think the trailer was executed really good i think that it looks terrifying do you know if it's vr like do you know if it's gonna be a vr compatible i have no idea as a vr yet i think right now i think they released it during the xbox press conference uh, i remember watching the xbox press conference and um, I think they released the trailer through that, so I don't think it's going to be VR because Xbox doesn't have any yeah. VR system uh, yet or probably ever. But uh, it would be really interesting if it was VR because that gives you more of a kind of more first person into it. It feels like you are the person if it was I'm, VR. I'm really wondering if they will branch off into VR and bring it into different consoles and such. But the way that the trailer makes it feel is it's very first person heavy. Like, you're experiencing everything as, like, you were in the game. Kind of like VR would be, you know? Yeah. 
Um, if you guys aren't familiar too, Blair Witch, of course, is the uh, famous movie that actually defined what first-person found footage films are today. That was like one of the first of its kind when it first came out. So when that came out, it was like a big deal. Um, so to to them to finally branch off to make a game, I know they made a movie called Blair Witch, um, which was a follow-up to the uh, original. So for them to branch off to make a game, I want to know where this is gonna if is if this is gonna set into the same storyline as that uh, those for, you know those two movies or if it's gonna be its own story. Uh, it's just on the Blair Witch, um, you know, what is it? The myth, the legend. Let's see. I think I think that it's just gonna be its own story. I mean, it makes sense, and I think that it fit better with a game if they do their own story. Still have little Easter eggs towards the movies and stuff like that. But I think as far as the game goes, I think that the original storyline would work a lot better. They have a lot more storytelling that they can do with the actual like original story of the Blair Witch. I think that there's plenty of stuff. I mean, I'm telling it like they haven't done it already, but they've already created this game. And I'm sure that there's tons of new stuff in there we haven't already seen and tons of Easter eggs. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I, I like you said earlier in the um in the uh in in the video we were you know we the video was executed amazingly like at the end of the freaking video we see the logo of the Blair Witch which is the infamous branches uh cut off into that logo and yeah it just you weren't you didn't know what this game was like if you were watching the press conference you didn't know what this game was until the very end when you saw that logo and you're like oh dude Blair Witch that's awesome but you knew it was a horror first person game where, of course, it was much like Outlast, where you're kind of just wandering around uh, trying to fend off bad guys and stuff like that. This feels like that, only it looks like it's going to be a little bit more uh, witchy, satanic-y, like how the Blair Witch is. Uh, you're going to kind of go off on your own adventure in these woods. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, was there a dog with you as well, I think? Yeah, I think I remember seeing a dog. Okay, so you're going to have a dog with you as well. So I, I can see that being a major benefactor in the game, too, as far as noises and stuff. That kind of hints at you to, to hide from whatever is coming. Uh, you I do think see... that plays more into the fact of first person too. You know, like oh, you have a dog by your side the whole time. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, like I said, it's going to play a major a major benefactor in this game as far as hiding and stuff goes. Also, uh, we did get a little glimpse of what the uh, the creature, the monster, looks like as it's running like past the woods and stuff like that. You can barely see it, but I think that's the fun of this trailer is they're keeping the uh, main villain a secret so when you do play it at the big reveal at the end it's like a shock to what it is and stuff like that which i thought is going to be really fun you know and horror and gaming is it just keeps growing and that's what i'm really excited about is all these horror games or all these games based off of horror movies or just horror stuff in general is like there's so many ways to experience horror you know you can go to a freaking haunt event you can go watch it in the movies and now even in games like that's crazy so it's it's a big thing for uh marketing wise for the gaming industry i think yeah most definitely i'm i'm really looking forward to it i think one of the last uh, horror games i had a very fun time in which was another first person was resident evil 7 biohazard um and that was just phenomenal if you guys aren't familiar with the resident evil series they they they've been around forever and they just remastered resident evil 2 uh and that looked beautiful as well uh, that's another one that I played, but the one I had a lot of fun with and really got scared was Resident Evil 7, um, and that was first person. You're fighting off this family who was, like, infected with this disease and stuff like that, but they all had, like, different abilities as to what they can do, and it was just a fun, uh, scary horror game, and I, I, I think if they can capitalize and make it better or, you know, just go from there, I think the future of the horror game industry can really improve on it. Um, there's this actually episode of Black Mirror, if you've ever seen that show, where oh, yeah, um, big fan. yeah they they remember when that one, one episode with Wyatt Russell where he tests that horror game and he was only in the game for like a second and he died oh, from yeah, it yeah. from getting too scared which I thought was an it was a brilliant episode and that shows you the technology you know <laughs> yeah it kind of shows you kind of gets you scared as to what might be able to come in the future you know because people people like getting scared that's why we, they go to these haunts that's why they watch scary movies people like that adrenaline rush of getting scared yeah and I definitely think that. You know, you could be a person that doesn't like to go out so much, but you can buy a game, plug it into your Xbox or PS4 or whatever you play, and experience that horror feel of getting scared. Yeah, most definitely. Um, another horror game that looks really amazing when I saw the trailer of this, and 
I, I'm curious. It's, I'm already sold as to uh, when I started seeing people disappear in this. Um, it's called Ghostwire Tokyo. I've never heard of this game, if they made previous games or not. Um, but Ghostwire Tokyo looks very interesting. Now, the premise behind this game is... Um, I don't know. It's kind of confusing because you're seeing, of course, gameplay of people in Tokyo. It looks very realistic at first, honestly, and that's how you know video games are really getting up there. But you see gameplay of, of people in Tokyo, and then all of a sudden people just start disappearing out of nowhere. Um, now, I'm very curious to see how they start disappearing. That's when they immediately they got my attention because I want to know how these people are disappearing and what is causing people to disappear or to stay is it a is it a secret weapon that someone designed uh is it like a government experiment of some sort i'm very curious is it aliens i i don't know they really kept this game with the trailer a very big secret and i'm very happy they did so because now i i get to kind of find out how stuff is going down but have you seen this trailer for uh this game it looks phenomenal yeah i've also seen this trailer i think that ghostwire is more focused mainly on either like you said like a government thing or like aliens more technology based more of like the more modern horror um i think that it's going to be more based of like the government has taken over and they're trying this new thing and they've created all these mutant aliens and such something with the government creating these terrifying creatures something around those lines it's definitely not going to be a classic horror game but i think it's going to be more modern than anything especially since it's based off in tokyo i mean everything's everything stuff like that is based off in tokyo godzilla for example just stuff like that in general yeah and um it, it was just it was just interesting to me because you, you know you're seeing people one minute walk around in tokyo like nothing's wrong and the next minute they just they They're just gone. disappear and i immediately got I immediately got infinity war <laughs> vibes but. yeah yeah <laughs> Um, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this game plays out. This looks more of a horror thriller to me. Um, so you mm -hmm. get to find out kind of what's going on in this, in this world of all these people just disappearing like nothing. Um, another thing that came to mind was, uh, this is the end in a way where people were getting sucked up into heaven, but it wasn't in that style form they were just disappearing. We don't know where they went. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this game is going to play out. Um, mainly because, like I said, people are just disappearing out of nowhere, so we don't know how that was, and they didn't reveal that in the trailer, which I really did enjoy that they didn't do that, because if they would have kind of revealed it, I guess it would have maybe revealed a major spoiler or secret of this game that they want to keep for this game. Plus, you know, like, people want to see what happens after a cliffhanger, and I feel like this trailer is a perfect example of a cliffhanger for a game, because now people actually have to go out and buy the game and play it, you know, and find out why these random people are disappearing so i think that whoever created ghostwire tokyo whoever the creators are behind the trailer and everything did an excellent job at just giving a quick preview of what the game is about even though it was a quick preview you still got a lot from it a lot from you to want to go buy the game and play it yeah most definitely so i'm very much looking forward to that uh definitely gonna pick that one up for when it comes out um so we're going to go on our next bit of news. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the new trailer that dropped um, kind of out of nowhere last week. Um, at least I was surprised when it dropped. They probably announced it prior to that. But um, out of nowhere, for me at least, uh, they dropped the Doctor Sleep trailer, the long-awaited sequel to The Shining. Um, and we finally got confirmation they are taking this is a direct sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Now, the reason why I say this, and you know, a lot of people were like, well, duh, but... The reason why I say this and bring this up is because if you guys know the history behind Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, Stephen King was not a fan of this movie. He did not really approve of a lot of the changes Stanley Kubrick made in this movie, and uh, for that he's kind of hated it. I don't know if he's gotten over it since then, but um, the reason why I bring this up is because I know that this Dr. Sleep, of course, St uh, Stephen King was promoting the trailer and everything, so he must be approved of this movie. He must like it a lot. And um, the fact that we saw a lot of tie-ins to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining uh, makes me wonder what Stephen King, if he eventually just got over his grudge over the Stanley Kubrick's uh, Shining movie, or if he still kind of hates it, but he's accepting this movie uh, because it's loyal to his book. Um, I'm really excited for this movie. I mean, just so many goosebumps went through my freaking body when I saw this trailer. I mean, have you seen this trailer? Yeah. 
I, I mean, I was at Disney on this day, and then it just dropped at random. And like you, like I wasn't expecting this trailer. I wasn't even expecting this movie to be made. They had hyped up a Shining sequel a, a while back, but then after that, they just kind of abandoned it. And now, ever since it's dropped, it's like, wow. Like Everyone who's a horror fan was talking about it. It's such an amazing trailer and such an amazing nod to The Shining. And this whole movie is going to be a great nod to The Shining. I'm just, just from the trailer, they did a good job. The way that I see it is a Disney trailer. You know, Disney, they don't give people a, the plot of the movie. They just give stuff to be excited about. Yeah. Um, and I think that they did that with Dr. Sleep. I think that whoever the creators were did a great job at giving a preview to it, giving, hey, look, there's nods to the shining in it, but not actually giving away the full plot. Definitely. Um. One thing I loved in this trailer so much was, of course, uh, Danny kind of taking the trip down memory lane of the Overlook Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was perfectly executed in this trailer. They didn't give away too much of what his intentions were. The only thing we got in this trailer was there's other people that can shine like him, and it looks like a secret agency wants to take control of all these people who can shine. And looks like Danny's going to have to find out something of his past to try to help this little girl out uh, as to how he can control the shining of course, and we see, of course, some nods to the Overlook Hotel. He goes back and looks down the hallway, and, of course, we see the uh, the twins, which was awesome. We got to see a little bit of Danny, um, you know, riding his tricycle down the hallways and stuff, but if you pay close attention, they didn't take a lot from the original movie. Now, they reshot a lot of stuff, and it looks pretty spot on, but I was watching a comparison of what the actual scene looked like compared to what they showed in Doctor Sleep, and they reshot a lot of those iconic scenes, but... It looks exactly alike. There's just maybe a couple slight differences that the human eye will catch. But I am very impressed of how they reshot it. It looks fantastic. It looks amazing. Um, I think the part of the trailer, though, that got me the, the most of Goosebumps uh, the, you know, was the very end, of course, when we see Danny look through the infamous red rum door. And, of course, it's still got the hole from which uh, Jack Torrance axed it through. And at the very end where it says Dr. Sleep and it's playing the Shining theme song, which was freaking amazing. And I like Evan McGregor as Danny. I think he'll do a great job. Also, um, Mike Flanagan is directing this movie. And if you guys don't know who Mike Flanagan is, he is the director behind The Haunting of Hill House, Ouija, Hush, all movies like that. So yeah. I'm really excited for him to be directing this movie. I think he's going to do it good. That's Haunting a Hill. That's the Netflix one, right? Or is that the is it a movie? Uh -huh. The Netflix one. That's yeah. the new. That's the relatively new horror series on Netflix. Now that that show was just phenomenal. We did a podcast on that. Me and Sammy just talking about that show because we absolutely fell in love with that show. Um, and I cannot wait for season two because I guess they're doing a whole new. It's going to be an anthology show, which I love that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, Mike Flanagan, I have complete trust in him. If he's doing Doctor Sleep, I, I remember actually hearing about this movie being made back in like 2016 or so. They announced that they were going to be doing it, and Ewan McGregor was going to be playing um, Danny, and I was all for it because, I like like you said, he's an amazing actor um, mm -hmm. You know, from movies such as Star Wars. If you guys don't know, he was in the original uh, or the prequels. Uh, he played Obi-Wan Kenobi, and that's where I first actually saw him in a role. He was in a season of Fargo, I believe, and, and he was I heard he was phenomenal in that. And also, he's in those. Um, he's in the movies. I forget. I forget the name off the top of my. Oh, Train Spotting. It's about a bunch of uh, meth heads and stuff like that. Uh, but he's phenomenal in that too. And he's just a great actor. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him back on the big screen. He doesn't really come out in a lot of stuff, but when he does, he doesn't fail to impress. He always nails his roles and stuff like that. And I don't have any doubt in my mind he's gonna make. Uh, he's gonna do an amazing job as Danny. And I think that. One of the biggest things to be excited about this movie is, it, like, guys, we're getting a Shining sequel. That's crazy. It's, And I'm really happy that they're not doing it to where it's just like a spinoff, you know? It's an actual sequel where Danny's, it's telling Danny's story now as he's older, and they're doing the nods, like I said. And they're re recreating those um, iconic scenes, like you said, and they look exactly like they did in the original. It's great. Yeah, and I'm I'm super looking forward to this. Um, and, and like you said, yeah, it's not it's not something that they just made up 
for just to give it a sequel to, for, to bring in money. This is a book that Stephen King actually wrote, a direct sequel to The Shining. Now, this was supposed to be uh, Danny's point of view as to all those years ago, how he's dealing with it as an adult and how it's come back to him to haunt him. Um, and people, I, I'm assuming, I got to read the book, but I'm assuming it's going to be like people bringing it up and stuff like that, how his dad was a murderer and stuff like that or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like somebody telling the story of the Overlook Hotel or yeah, yeah. Just stuff like that. Definitely, yeah. And I, I don't know if you guys know this too. There's a deleted, or not a deleted scene, but it's a scene that never made it to, I think, screen. But there's an extra scene that Stanley Kubrick wrote in the Shining script that actually takes place after the events of the Overlook Hotel where Danny and his mom come back and they go to a hospital and they start talking about the events of The Shining and stuff like that. Um, and it, 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 I, I'm very upset that that never made it to the to the, um, to the final film because I would love to see their kind of reaction as to after all that's happened, what, what's come next and stuff like that. That would also ultimately set up Dr. Sleep as to Danny's path as to where to go from there. But... Uh, nonetheless, I'm very much looking forward to this movie. This movie comes out in November too, so we're getting it this year. Uh, Stephen King we don't is have just. To wait. What happened? I said we don't have to wait. I know no. we don't have to wait very long. Yeah. Like right after Haunt season over, like we're getting this movie, and I love that. Um, but Stephen King's just have he has like a, a freaking busy year this year, man. He's he's getting it chapter two, which comes out in September, and like not even freaking two months later, we're getting. Freaking Doctor Sleep. Two of the biggest movies in the horror industry right now, like hands down for this year, two of the biggest movies. Yeah, not only are you getting a freaking sequel to it, but you're getting a sequel to The Shining, which is, I, I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. And I guarantee you both those movies are gonna be good. Yeah, I mean, no if you what. loved It Chapter One, I can guarantee you you're gonna love Chapter Two. It's just gonna, the only difference in It Chapter Two is they're adults now, they're returning back to Derry, but it's probably going to be the same freaking taunting from Pennywise, which was phenomenal in it, Chapter 1. And think of it this way. They took so long to make Chapter 2. Yeah. They didn't just rush it out. They took a while to make this movie. So, Yeah, they really took their time on both these movies. And the first one came out good. I don't imagine the second one won't either. Um, same with The Shining, you know. I feel like they've been thinking about Doctor Sleep for a while now. Yeah, they you probably know, wanted I mean, to make it back in the day too. But mm -hmm. now like right when the book came out. Yeah, but and now it makes more sense though because it's supposed to be around thirty years since The Shining, and or yeah, thirty thirty five around that much time since The Shining, and it just makes more sense now because you've waited this long just to see where Danny's at now, and I couldn't have uh, I couldn't have think of a better time to release it than now. You know, I mean, it just makes the most sense. And I really like that that like nowadays in different films that they're actually doing stuff like that. Nonetheless, so it is hard to wait for a long time for a movie that you want to see like a sequel but movies such as the shining or movies that came out um pre-2000s that are set up to be like oh 30 years from now or 20 years from now work perfectly like the shining where it's like 30 years from now and even though it's like what how how long ago did the shining come out i think it came years, out right? like yeah like I'll, I'll give you the day right now i think it came out in like 80 something but nonetheless, I get what you're saying, though. Like, they've waited yeah. this long. and So around 30 years, and it, like, stays true to the story, you know? like. So the movie I came out that. in 1980. Let's see, what is it? 2020. Yeah, like 39 years. <laughs> yeah, almost 40 years later, man. So it, That's crazy. It's That's insane. just a crazy thing to think. And, it, it'll be, and the good thing about this movie, too, um, at least in my opinion... The movie looks like it hasn't really aged at all. Like it looks mm -mm. still amazing for its time. And it's on the it's on Netflix now. Yeah, there you go. Check it out before you go see the Doctor Sleep. I highly it's recommend. It's all the remastered Shining. and everything on Netflix, which is great. Yeah, I highly recommend. Of course, if you haven't seen The Shining, watch it. It's such a great movie. Um, but nonetheless, I am very much looking forward to this. I uh, hope the audience is too, because this is a very exciting news for the horror community. Um, all right, Scott. So we're gonna talk a little bit about you now. So, uh, tell us what is it? What is it like uh, at your at your point in the YouTube career? What is it like having fans approach you and stuff like that? I know it's not. It must be kind of like still. You're still kind of getting used to it, right? Yeah, I'm getting used to it. Uh, I'm getting used to the whole YouTube career right now because as I've progressed more and more, I've turned my YouTube channel more into a brand of sorts. Um, obviously I just launched the website a month ago, 
website's going great, SoCalExploring.com. And congratulations I, on that, I, by the way. I it took me f- so long to make. <laughs> Trust me, it was, it's so hard to build a website. So props to anyone who does it in the future. Like it's hard. Um, and really, I just been kind of trying to sit down and grind the hell out of whatever this is i'm trying to do not even i know what i'm trying to do yet you know i'm just trying to cover as much theme parks and attractions as possible in the most professional way possible obviously like you were mentioning earlier with SeaWorld, um i have great media connections with them they're always being helpful as far as coverage goes as far as events goes and i i appreciate the whole SeaWorld team for that and uh, lots of people like to watch SeaWorld content because I don't think that there's a lot of people doing it, you know? So um, for me, that's one of my big home parks as far as getting noticed, as far as content, all that good stuff. And then HHN construction started. Um, so that's always been a, a big thing that I've really taken on every year. There's a lot of people that have been really fading away from from HHN updating. I don't know if you've noticed this too. Um, HHN updating is kind of dying. Yeah. As sad as it is to say. And um, I'm not trying to sound cocky or anything, but I've really been the only one that's been uploading these consistently this year. Yeah, Um, definitely. There's been people that have done updates here and there, but there used to be like a couple years ago, tons of people would be making updates every single week. I'm seeing more this year, more, a lot of people are sharing a lot more pictures than they are videos this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are sharing pictures, whether it's construction. Um, Lots of people are more just talking about what they're hearing than actually making a full, like, report on it or, like, breaking something down. Yeah. Which is, it's kind of sad to see because I I miss when I used to be able to watch HHN updaters myself. Um, and I hope we can get more in. So I'm really just trying to keep it alive. Um, there's still plenty of fans out there for it as far as HHN updating goes. And it's not like I'm just sitting in front of the camera just rambling and stuff like that. I like to script my videos, talk a lot about of, or think a lot about of the topics I'm talking about. And I think one of the cool things is, is I've been doing a lot of interactive stuff where I share on my Instagram, like, if you want to be featured in the video, then share your thoughts. And I know you've tuned into that and I've featured a couple of your stuff too. Definitely. Um, and it really, I think that it makes people happy because they get a voice for on a platform that already has a good following and they don't have to necessarily go make their, make a YouTube channel themselves. They get to be featured on a video, their thoughts and have their Instagram name or YouTube name or whatever's on there and not have to go through the stress of making a video and stuff like that it just makes people happy and i think that's why i've been doing a lot more of that as of lately yeah for sure um yeah i think i would be busting out some uh hhn stuff too but i just don't have a pass right now i'm planning on getting one at the end of june so that should be coming pretty soon and when june comes around we're gonna start doing some more uh, updates and stuff so uh you won't be alone on the boat (laughs) but um we need more people (laughs) yeah uh just to get more people out there, more people, more kind of like almost like a weekly thing where if one person goes one week, then the next person goes the next week to see how it's doing, then they capitalize on that, you know, just to kind of keep the system going where people week after week can go and just you can see how it's progressing. And it also gets a way to get other people to go to other people's channels just to check everything out, and it's good kind of support for everyone. Um, but, yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's just it's it's been one of those things, and – Um, the, the thing that I like on your channel now is, um, you know, compared to like a year ago, uh, you're doing a lot more construction updates now and you're going to a lot more theme parks and you know, you're, you're, you're sticking around and I'm loving watching every week a construction update of yours or a brand new show that's appeared. Um, what's it like having to, having to kind of schedule everything for like, okay, this week I'm going to do Disneyland and Universal, and then the next week I'm going to do like SeaWorld. How is your like planning go for that? Like, how do you know? Does it just happen where like, oh, out of nowhere, I'm just going to go Disneyland? Or do you plan it like weeks ahead of time? Like, I'm going to do Disneyland this week, I'm going to do Universal the next. Like, how does the planning go for all this? To be honest, like, and I'm about to get um, real, real right now, it's, 
it's so hard to because i work i work almost a full-time job i'm working four to five days a week and it doesn't like i i don't always know my schedule um and i've advanced in that job so getting out to the parks has always been a hard thing and separating when i'm gonna go has always been a hard thing too right now obviously the big thing right now is jurassic world jurassic world the ride is the is the um, one that everybody wants to see right now but then you also have to think about the sea world community or the disney community who want to see the inside out ride or the sea world community who want to see the the new show that's going on down there so i really have to I look into my analytics and I look into what videos I've been doing and try to spread it out because I'm my name is SoCal Exploring. I don't want to just stick to upload Jurassic World, Jurassic World, Jurassic World or Sea World, Sea World, Sea World. I try my best to spread it out as much as possible. It doesn't matter if there's like if like Jurassic World soft opens, but a Sea World show is brand new on that day and all I've been uploading is Jurassic World. I'm going to do that SeaWorld one because it brings in a much more larger demographic than just Universal. And like I said earlier, I'm trying to build this into more of a brand and have a lot more fans compared to just one community. So what is, it is hard. It's, it's really hard. And I've had my days of stressness and wanting to quit and even points where I'm crying, bro. Like it's, it's hard, but, do I love doing it? Yeah. And it's, you have to be patient with it. And I think that's why a lot of people have been quitting the theme park updating side of stuff. Um, I think that people are getting stressed because it's so much content to work with. And a lot of people don't have that grind and motivation. And um, I, I know it sounds corny, but I look up to Tim Tracker a lot. Like that guy is, he's doing it all. Um, so I'm really just trying to start something new, start something new that was new back then, but then kind of faded out and I'm trying to start it back up again, especially for California. There's a lot of stuff going in, going on in Orlando. There's a lot of, uh, theme park YouTubers over there. I don't know if you've noticed, but, um, there's not that many in California. So I'm really trying to start a big community the only other ones i can think about is tlap and those guys are doing good with their content as well um and my good friend jp he's really doing good and i'm just i'm really trying to re rebuild this community as as much as possible it's hard to schedule around whether or not i go to disney this week or universal this week i don't necessarily have a plan it all kind of just comes last minute and i think that's the great thing about it and the more exciting thing about the lifestyle that i'm trying to live definitely man yeah it's it looks like it's it's just one of those things where you gotta kind of plan around what you already have kind of come up and planned and stuff like that that's what it seems like and yeah you are right it's it's one of those things where you can't just do one thing every time because people want to see it there's people that want to see your sea world stuff or your disney stuff you got to kind of keep going, pacing, and just, you know, cycling through everything. That way it's not the same thing every week. You kind of have something new almost every week, which is awesome because you actually try to hit out all the theme parks as much as possible, especially where you where you kind of live at, dude. Like, it, it's it's kind of hard to get out here, too, I can imagine. With, I don't live close to L.A., guys. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> yeah, he, he lives kind of like the opposite way <laughs> yeah um, so it so it, it's just it's for him to plan days and stuff it really goes uh kind of uh, a lot for him and and stuff like that but yeah man I, I really am enjoying your content and stuff like that and um what can you what can you give us as an exclusive for the podcast as to what's to come this summer do you have any plans what's to come this summer tons of media events i got tons coming this summer um, I just recently started getting invited to Universal. Universal used to never invite me to media events because I was small. Um, but now I've been getting invited to all these Universal media events. And that's that's also kind of a sign of like, hey, Scott, you're growing. There you go. <laughs> um, Universal, SeaWorld, all that stuff. I'm And construction updates. Like you said, like lots more construction updates this year because – fans like that a lot and instead of just filming construction and putting music over them i've been trying to do it in more of a vlog style so i think people enjoy that a lot more 
So definitely more construction updates, vlogging style wise. Um, I'm going to work on a couple big, pro big projects here and there that will come out later this summer, horror related and stuff. I'm going to, I'm actually in talks with horror people trying to get interviews set up and stuff like that. Oh, and, and John Murdy interviews, you know, who everybody wants to see those. Yeah, um, definitely. So, so really just trying to push the bar as far as how big can you go with these theme park videos? And I really want to try to do different stuff like bigger projects um doc small little documentaries and stuff like that lots of stuff coming this summer especially now that like summer is where everything opens you know everything is um brand new like west coast racers i'm excited for that that's definitely going to be a huge vlog when that opens it looks like it's going to be a busy freaking summer for you i was kind of just rethinking about all the stuff that you just said right now and man from freaking interviews to different areas to go it looks like it's going to be a really busy one for you um what are you most excited for attraction wise that it's going to be opening up this year i know we got a couple big ones opening up to the public opening up to just open up in general um what is your kind of attraction that you're eyeing out that you're like okay this is going to be one that's going to be fun to cover and it's going to be fun to just enjoy for the day well you do have a couple big ones i think the one that's the most obvious right now is jurassic world I'm that's literally could open in the next couple of weeks. They still have not sent anything that out to anyone. They haven't even sent out um, team member preview invitations yet. Um, I think that's the one that I'm most excited about as far as coverage goes. The I've, I, they've just been hearing such good things about that ride and the grand opening. I'm sure it's going to be phenomenal. I'm hoping that we see Chris Pratt there. That would That'd be, be dope. absolutely amazing if Chris Pratt was there. Also, West Coast Racers. I'm really looking forward to West Coast Racers. The, the they've been delayed on it a lot, and I'm I just I know Six Flags is seen as kind of a ghetto park, but their attractions are huge. So that's one that I'm really looking forward to. Thrill wise, Galaxy's Edge is open, and walking past Rise of the Resistance entrance, I just like, uh, I want to I want to ride it because. I, Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, that ride's insane. I, or have you seen a POV of it? I have. I've seen a lot of them. I've been wanting to go to the thing so bad. Um, I couldn't get a reservation, but it does open up to the public in about a week. So, very Let much. Let me tell you, it is insane. Like, and seeing that makes me so excited for Rise of the Resistance because Rise of the Resistance is supposed to be the much larger scaled one compared to millennium falcon it's supposed so to be like a transformers scale. type ride right where it's like you're going yeah. screen to screen like it's trackless but it's gonna have the movements of transformers which is crazy yeah i'm very much looking forward to that too they've shown some like like early kind of concept footage of it and i was very kind of excited for that i mean they've only shown oh, like so much like those are insane <laughs> Yeah, and I'm very much looking forward to just going to Star Wars Land in general, man, because from everything I've seen, reviews, just everything, man, it looks like every Star Wars fan's dream come true right there. Trust me, when you go there, you're going to be blown away. I have trouble going back into normal Disney because I'm like, I'm on Earth now. I yeah. just came from Bat too, and everything, like, all the CMs are all dressed up and stuff. Everything is in their different language and everyone's speaking in the star wars language and then you go to normal disneyland and everyone's wearing a freaking overalls in critter country yeah um I, i'm very excited to see what you cover this summer it should be a, a fun summer um last thing and i don't think we've covered this on the channel or at least on the podcast but we tend to like to have our guests uh tell us their favorite uh horror movie their horror events stuff so what's your favorite horror movie we'll start with that question Horror movie. So I'm going to I'm going to say a horror movie from the past couple years or so. Um because obviously my favorite horror movie is Halloween hands down. Yeah. Um but as far as the past couple years go, that's a tough one. I've watched so many. I'm just going to go on a, on the normal one and say Halloween. Halloween. Like Halloween 2018 was good. That was good. Yeah. Also I don't think Jigsaw should have gotten as much hate as it did. I, I like Jigsaw. Jigsaw. I enjoyed yeah. it. I kind of did. I, I I just just because the Saw series was 
such a good series. Well, it wasn't a good series. It was a terrible series, but it was a fun series, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's so gory and stuff. And, and Jigsaw was an, an awesome, uh, you know, addition to the series, I thought, at least. It's um, crazy to see John Kramer up and going again. Yeah, he's he's back, and, he you know, he came out for that little segment, which was awesome. Uh, and lastly, your favorite horror event. Horror event. Um, last year, I was more leaning towards Scary Farm just because of the complete garbage year that HHN had in 2017. Yeah. But um, I think I'm more on the HHN side again. Now it's had their time to shine, and now it's HHN, especially with the speculated lineup. Um, insane. Yeah. Insane lineup. I won't say it here, but um, Anthony has a video if you want to go check it out on his channel. And um, also, a lot of people have been talking about it. It's it's an insane lineup, guys. Yeah, it, and since there's one, I'm not going to say it, but the one that you told me right before we went on the air, um, if that is coming to the event, um, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like this. This lineup caters a lot to true horror fans, which is the great thing. Now it's gonna piss some people off because a lot of the people who go to HHN or middle schoolers who don't know anything, they just go there to get scared. But this lineup caters a lot to true horror fans. Let me tell you. Definitely. So there's one. There's one thing. There's a major announcement. I'm gonna just drop right here right now. Um. And I'm very excited about this announcement. I've been kind of keeping it um, a secret because nothing's kind of, I mean, I'm waiting to kind of set up a date with this person um, as far as doing a podcast goes. But um, we all know that um, from the construction photos, from everything, Killer Clowns is said to be coming to the event. And from what we've seen construction-wise, it's looking like it's going to be coming. Nothing's confirmed yet, but... We've seen a lot of construction photos. We've seen, of course, the infamous tent. A lot of people are just speculating that it's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. However, if Murdy just wants to throw us a curveball and it's just making an original clown maze, that'd be hilarious. But, you know. Um, but here for the first time with SoCal Exploring, I'm going to be announcing um, John Mazzari, the composer from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, has contacted me on my, my personal uh, Instagram and uh, I had asked him if he'd be open to do an, an interview on the podcast. We have not set a date yet, but he's pretty much confirmed that he would love to uh, do a, uh, a podcast in the next coming weeks. So that's going to be uh, the last e guest, um, well, unless I get more, but a last confirmed guest that we have on the Mindless Horror Podcast this summer. Um, the composer from Killer Clowns from Outer Space is going to be coming with us uh talking a little bit about the uh you know his history of being a composer what it was like to do killer clowns and stuff it, it's gonna be fun i'm very much looking forward to it you know that's a, that's a huge interview for you because um for uh, where you're starting at right now with nights of horror to pull an interview like that is insane I mean, yeah a legend. i i, I <laughs> was i was freaking out when he just agreed when i asked like would you be willing to come on the podcast he's he's a fan of the channel i guess um and i'm, I'm very thankful for that and he followed me on Twitter, or he followed me on Instagram, and that kind of like that day when he did that, it kind of lost my shit. Because um, if a lot of you don't know, that is my all-time favorite horror movie. Um, whatever that movie's I, amazing. Yeah. I just rewatched it the other day um, when all the rumors started up, and like that movie's just amazing. Yeah, it it really I, is. It just I, for its time, it was something that was different, and to this day, it still is probably it really what makes nobody's clowns. made anything like it. Yeah, you know, and it's just like, I I love it. Uh, it's got some comedy in it. It's got horror in it. it it's it's got everything. It's a fun. It's just a fun movie, and um, especially like this guy isn't some just like random editor or anything. This guy's the composer of the music. Yeah, this guy yeah. was the guy Top responsible two. for the music of the movie, which in my opinion is one of the best scores I've ever heard in a movie. Unbiased. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's just. It's it's one of those scores where it's like it fits into the movie perfectly, but it just sounds awesome as well. Um, and I, I'm really excited to get the opportunity to interview him. Um, I cannot, like I said, I don't have a date yet. We're gonna still plan a date. He's been actually really busy with other projects, and um, I, I'm very much looking forward to uh, 
getting in his, you know, just to talk a little bit about Killer Clowns from Outer Space, uh, the future of potentially other Killer Clowns from Outer Space projects. I know there's a sequel that's rumored to be in the works, and the uh, the directors and everybody have confirmed that they are working on something, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, after you imagine if we get that? That'd be insane. A sequel. I know. They have been talking about it for years, and I hope it comes in the next couple years, but... Um, Nonetheless, it should be a fun interview, um, and of course, with the success of the scare zone at uh, HHN Orlando last year, I wouldn't be 100% sure that we're getting it at the event this year, um, and I would love it if we got a scare zone and a maze, but that's just me. Or maybe um, John can shed some light on what he's heard about that coming to the event. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, if, if it is true and it is coming to the event. We'll talk to him about what he thinks of it becoming a full, hopefully a maze this year. And, um, you know, his thoughts about it just being a scare zone last year would be cool. I would love to hear that. Well, because um, think he'd, they'd be using his music. You yeah. Know? And he'd probably collab on them to maybe just redo some stuff just to kind of, you know, update the music of some sort. Mm -hmm. Just to, you know, with the instruments and stuff we have today, maybe he'll make it sound even better. So that should be fun. Very much looking forward to that. Summer of Guest is is here, guys. Episode two, of course, with SoCal Exploring. I just, I asked him literally a couple days ago to come on the podcast, and he was open to it. And that's why I love SoCal Exploring, man. He's one of the, he's one of the closest friends of the channel. He was there from the start, and for him to be uh, a part of Summer of Guests is awesome. Thank you for joining us on Summer of Guests. I'm glad you uh, got a chance to come on through. And thank you for having me on. Like just seeing your channel grow, it's you're growing a lot faster than I did. Trust me. <laughs> um, and this being here, I love doing podcasts. Like I really do love being being a part of people's podcasts. It's just fun because when we film our podcast this year at my studio, um, it's like you're just talking to your fan base and stuff like that. But when you go on someone else's podcast, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different feeling. And, Definitely, um, yeah. It's cool. Um, so yeah, you're welcome back anytime. Can't wait to see the channel grow even more. If you guys are not yet subscribed to SoCal Exploring, please go do so. The link's in the bio below. Um, he puts up, of course, anything from construction updates to vlogs to media events, anything and everything in between, whatever he feels like putting up on the channel. He's making SoCal Exploring his, his brand. He's got a website, www.socalexploring.com. Make sure to follow him on social media, SoCal Exploring and SoCal Exploring Media. Um, what is it? SoCal Exploring for Twitter, Twitter. SoCal Exploring Media for Instagram. So make sure to follow him on social media to keep updated of what he's posting on his channel. Like I said, be sure to subscribe to his channel so you can see all of his amazing content and visit his website to hear his opinions and uh, break some news on some theme park uh, stuff. It is amazing. See where this channel is going. Scott, thank you for coming on the channel and thank you for being part of Summer of Guests. And uh, until then, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you guys in the horror conventions, uh, horror events just events in general theme parks if you see one of us don't be a stranger come up and say hello and under your bed under your bed yep <laughs> <laughs> under your bed uh if you see us in any of these parks don't be a stranger come up we will happily say hi if you want to take a picture take a picture um and yeah thank you guys for uh tuning in for another episode of summer guest and i will see you guys next week peace